What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today we're back in Oklahoma, we've got fresh content, and we're doing another dealer auction walk around and I can't even believe what I just found out here today. I am absolutely in love with this car. This is a 2022 Mercedes S500 and unfortunately the S500 no longer comes with a V8. It's a straight six. But what's interesting about this car is it only has 8,000 miles on the odometer. And don't let the straight six fool you. It's absolutely got power. It will get up and go. It's still a very, very luxurious car. I already looked it up on my Black Book Cherry to see what something like this would run me. And at the auction, you're looking at between 83 and 86,000 dollars for this car wholesale. But here's the banger. If I were to sell it retail, this car is worth $95,000 on the retail market. So you could buy this for probably $85,000 and turn around and sell it for a $10,000 profit. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about right there. It's got me thinking, maybe I should spend more money on some of the more expensive luxury cars. Man, I don't even need to make $10,000, guys. If I could make $5,000 on this car, just buying it and flipping it, I would be happy. Who would complain about $5,000 in profit? Plus, you get to drive around in a practically brand new Mercedes Benz, an S-Class. Now, this thing, this thing has it all. Um, it really does. You have your 3D screen. It probably doesn't come out very well on camera, but that is your 3D driver screen. You can actually turn it on and off with the push of a button, and maybe you'll see the difference when I turn it off. That's normal, and that's 3D. I doubt you can see it. There's normal, and then there's 3D. Wow, the depth is amazing. Look at this steering wheel. There's plenty to do in this car. You've got your different drive modes, um, individual, Sport Plus, Sport, Comfort, and of course, Eco. Nobody wants Eco, so put that back in Sport Plus. You got your home button, which takes you to your navigation screen. Then you got the car button right here, and it asks you where you want to go to navigate. And then, I assume if you push this, we can go into different settings. You got your apps, comfort controls, phone controls, media, radio, smartphone, info. Okay, consumption, vehicle. Ooh, oh wow, an accelerometer. Oh, very nice, very nice. This screen does everything. You do have paddle shifters, of course. You've got your uh, reverse drive and park. This folds in and you get a couple of cup holders and I'm assuming a wireless charging pad right there. And here, I have no idea what this is, but it does have a random cup holder. Okay, I don't know. This again belongs to Mercedes-Benz of Oklahoma City. And I'm telling you, they have some nice cars. Take a look at this, you get a pillow, a soft pillow on your headrest. I <laughs> How much more luxury do you really need in a car? It's got all of the books. Looks like it's got a little tool kit or something in there as well. Probably a wheel lock kit. These wheels look very expensive. Uh, we don't need to ask if the uh, windows work because of course they do. It's got 8,000 miles on the odometer. I mean, this is a brand new car. Look at your accent lighting all the way around. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful. I think. I think so far my biggest complaint with the car is the air conditioner vents. I think they're weird. It's very strange. They took them from like where they would be right in front of you, where they blow directly on you and you feel it nice and hard, and they moved it way back. I mean, this is way back on top of the dash. It, you know, I, I guess you get used to it, but it just seems like an odd placement. And so far back, you don't feel it nearly as good as you do when it's up close and personal. And then you've got these, like twin. Why not just make one that's a little bigger? You get two skinny rectangular vents. Uh, whatever, it's fine, they work. Your headlight controls, that's another odd placement. You expect your headlight controls to be like maybe here, or maybe here, but Mercedes put it on the driver's door. 
which is a little bizarre. Yes, the air-conditioned seats work. All your seat controls are here. Memory settings are here. Mirrors, windows, headlights, etc., etc. I mean, overall, it's a very basic car to figure out and understand. I know it looks complicated because it's got a lot of buttons, but I mean, you've got your cruise control distance that you can set right here. You've got home and back, okay button, cruise control on and off, and then there's the distance between you and the car in front of you. You want your cruise control to hold. Over here, I believe all of this operates this side. All of this will operate all of this. I mean, it's it's very intuitive. I'll give it that. There's a lot of options. I don't want to say it's simple. It's basic. It's a Mercedes S-Class. It's not, but it's easy to understand. And some of the older BMWs and the older Mercedes were not this easy to understand. And this thing has so many more features than they could have ever hoped to have had. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buckle up. We're just going to take it on a really quick ride. And then we're going to come back, pop the hood. And uh, I think I really like this car. I, I think I really like this car. All right, so let's take the S-Class out on a drive. It's freaking out because there's cars really close. And I guess when you drive a Mercedes, you don't park close to anybody. But out here, well, they park the cars wherever they will fit. You have the dynamic seat still, just like my W222. I like it. I like it. Oh, man. I'm barely even driving it and you can feel how expensive this car is. Look at the 3D driving display there. That is trippy. That, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but that is trippy. Oh, wow. John, I hope you see this video. I do, I hope you see this video. I know you guys probably think there's no way I could buy this car. Um, but I'm gonna tell you right now, you're wrong. I absolutely can afford to buy this car. The question is, do I wanna basically put all of my eggs in one basket? Let's give her a go. Oh, wow. I'm not even going, I'm not even, ha I'm not hammer, I didn't floor it. I wouldn't do that to a car this expensive. Um, I already know that the car should be perfectly fine. I'm just double checking that it is what I believe it is. Um, and if all else fails, I'm sure I could get a hold of John and he could uh, he could probably fill me in on what the deal is with this car. It may just be something that sat on the lot too long. It just didn't sell. I mean, maybe people aren't spending this kind of money on a vehicle right now, but um, I thought for sure that being a straight six, yeah, the performance was gonna be lacking. I'm here to tell you, I, I've, I've had an S63 AMG W220 or the W221, I think was the, yeah, W221 S63 AMG. All right, that thing got it. I had the S550 W222, I had the E550, which I don't even know what that is, what the designation is for that one. I'm saying I've had, that's a pretty powerful Mercedes. And this one, is very surprising. Oh my God, wow. Huh. <laughs> I just, I'm kind of blown away that a straight six feels that powerful. I have no idea what the horsepower specs are on this. Not a clue what the horsepower or torque specs are on this car. I don't know what the zero to 60 time is on this car. I can tell you I have not floored it. I did not go out here and floor this car. I didn't do it. I definitely laid into the throttle some, but I didn't floor it. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. This thing, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Here's what I'm thinking though. If I could find a, a retail dealer, right, that wanted to make a little bit of money and we worked together on something like this, I have the money, I can buy the car. That's not an issue. I can already see the comments, you're a liar. Well, you know, stay tuned and maybe we'll see what happens. But. I can buy the car. That is not a problem. I have no issue buying the car. The problem is I need to be able to retail the car in order to make that profit. So what I'm thinking is, you know, if you had if you had a dealer that was like, "Hey, you know, I basically 
I am taking all the risk on the car because I'm the one putting up all the money for it. So there's no risk to the dealer at all. It's a brand new Mercedes. If I fronted the $85,000 for the car and I had a retail dealer that could sell it for, you know, right around that $95,000 mark, I want my five grand profit. Anything left, you know, that's, that's for somebody else. I know that's not, that's, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It sounds like a good deal, but here's my thing. If Mercedes-Benz themselves couldn't sell this car, then what makes me think that I can sell it? You know what I mean? I'm sure they tried selling it online and, and it probably didn't sell or whatever. So that's how it ended up here. So from where I'm sitting, it's a huge, huge risk. Because if I drop 85 on this car, I'm pretty well broke. And I'm not going to be able to buy anything else other than what I already have. And if it doesn't sell for a profit, I'm going to lose money. And on something like this, you could really lose your ass. Let's go ahead and shut it off. I guess it's off. It doesn't even sound like it turns off. Man, this is such a nice car. And I was very careful parking it back in its parking spot. It's not too close to anything. I gave it plenty of room. This is a brand new Mercedes, guys. I, I mean, I know it's a 2022, so technically it's not, but it's got 9,000 miles on the odometer. It's a new Mercedes. And it's kind of like, kind of a bucket list thing for me, you know, man, to say I, I the, the guy that came from the trailer park just bought a brand new Mercedes, <laughs> a brand new S-Class. Um, <laughs> it's definitely, definitely a bucket list thing for me to do there. But I've also got another bucket list thing and I'm actually looking at a Ferrari right now. Uh, I'm not gonna get too much into it, but I found a Ferrari uh, that is an insane deal as far as I'm concerned. It's a $68,000 Ferrari. Um, another bucket list thing of mine. Remote functions restricted service required. Oh no. Does it already have problems? Well, I don't know what that means. Here's the remote. This is the remote control right here. Beautiful, beautiful key fob. I'm guessing it needs to be charged. It looks like maybe it's got a magnetic charger on the bottom. I don't know, that releases the key. I have no idea, guys. I have no idea. Either way, this is an absolutely phenomenal car, but I don't know if I... Ch <laughs> choosing between dropping all of my eggs in one basket on this or buying a Ferrari and still having money left over, even though the Ferrari is much older, um, it's still a Ferrari. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's still a Ferrari. I don't know. This is one I'm going to have to really, really think hard on because like I said, if I, if I were to buy this car, it would be everything. I mean, I would be putting everything I've got left into one vehicle, hoping that there's a profit to be made. And it just scares me that Mercedes-Benz sent it down here instead of selling it retail. So if they were having trouble selling it, I find it highly unlikely that I would be able to sell it and make a profit. Drop your comments below though, and tell me what you think. So now we've walked away from those vehicles and we're over here in the rental car section. Everything you see, everything, about as far as the eye can see all the way down, these are, uh, these are rental cars. So they're all gonna be pretty, pretty basic average normal cars that you would expect to find at a rental car company and I don't know why I continue walking these aisles because I never find anything that intrigues me I don't ever find anything interesting they're great cars I mean almost all of these are gonna be wonderful cars probably serviced well reliable all of that good stuff it's just I like I like unique cars I like I like things that are different I like cars that stand out I guess when it comes down to I just I like to be seen. You know what I mean? I like to drive down the road and have someone look at that car and go, oh man, that's a cool car. That's just really what it comes down to. And uh, unfortunately, when you're into the rental car scene over here, you know, I mean, yeah, the Broncos are cool. I like the Broncos. You know, there you go. There's a Bronco right there. It's a cool Bronco. The problem is it's not, it's not the full Bronco. It's, it's, it's the sport Bronco, right? And I, you know, I'm sorry, but when the Broncos were first released, people were losing their minds over them. Even the sport version, people were just crazy over. Well, they've been out for a little while, right? It's, this is a 2021, it's 2023. Eh, Broncos are, you know, eh, all right, interesting, I guess, but 
you know everybody's seen one now so it's not that uh it's not that unique here you got a malibu you've got a little bit of damage to the front end here the hood is overlapping the bumper aside from that it's not too bad but that definitely needs to be addressed that's an eyesore right there let's go ahead and pop the hood and see if we've got any kind of damage to the core support. All right, I had to turn the camera off because these guys pulled up and they started talking to each other and I can't, they were doing it right in front of the car so I couldn't film. Well, I didn't want to film them having a conversation, you know what I mean? I feel like it's rude to, to get into people's conversations. So I decided to just sit in the car, cool off a little bit. It's super hot out today. Um, I opened the hood and I'm gonna show you what I found, which isn't anything too concerning. I kind of like this rental car. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I'm actually looking for an Impala. I'm looking for one of the last generations of the Impala. I'm looking for an LTZ, of course, and it's got to have the V6, not when they started putting the two five four cylinders into the Impala. Well, the Impala doesn't exist anymore. All right, they killed the Impala and the Malibu is all that's left. The Malibu is pretty damn similar to the Impala. It's a bigger car. It's bulky, wide bulges, it's, it's got good lines, it's a good looking car, but really I want the old Impala. I, I call it old, but it's not that old. I want that last gen Impala with the V6, LTZ, sunroof leather, I want it all, and I don't know why. So as far as this hood goes, there's definitely some damage. Somebody's put some tape, somebody's done some work to this. They put some tape and uh, I'm wondering if the hood itself isn't actually bent, but down here you can see it's scraped where the hood release is. It's scraping the metal. So something, this car has been in some kind of an accident. It's had some kind of a repair to it. Overall though, it's not anything that concerns me. It's just, it doesn't look good because from here, the gaps are good. And then here they just go all to hell. And then they come back again over here. Um, front bumper looks relatively good, although it did take an impact right here. You can clearly see that's all chewed up and broken. Same thing right here, impact here, impact here. Uh, the bumper doesn't fit quite right around the headlight either. It's come off of its clips. So yeah, I would say it was in a very minor front end collision. It's only got 24,000 miles on it. It's got a sunroof, a very nice sunroof, I might add. But this is what I find interesting about this car. It's a pretty well optioned car, except it has no leather. It's got the cloth seats, cloth everywhere. But it's a nicely optioned car. You even have the your sun shade right there opens up. Look at that big panoramic roof. How nice. I guess I don't know how to close it. There you go. This is a really nice car. And there's only one other thing about it that really kind of bothers me. I, I really want the leather. But is leather necessary? No, it, it, it's not necessary. Um, again, I don't know why I'm really looking for one of these, but I really want the big old Impala. Ever since I saw the one over there in the repo yard with the crunched roof, I just can't stop thinking about them. And I really want one. I like this. I, I would absolutely buy this car as a nice little Econo box to get around in. Low miles, this thing's still under warranty. The issue I have with it is number one, the front end's kind of crunched. Um, I don't really want a crunched car. I want one that's in good condition, ready to roll, so I can just drive it and enjoy it and save on fuel economy. But the interior smells like an elephant's pen, or maybe not an elephant, maybe a hippo's pen. I've smelled this before in these rental cars. The, the closest thing that my memory can come up with is the smell when you go to the zoo and you walk in to the elephant pen or you walk in to the hippopotamus pen. It's this really unique smell. It's a, it's, a, it's a blend of fragrances. Some good and some not so good, but it's a very interesting smell that if you've ever smelled one, if you ever went to the zoo, you saw the elephants, you saw the hippos, you know what the smell is and you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're probably smelling it right now. There is no such thing as smell-o-vision, but if you can describe a fragrance just right, people can smell it through the TV. I guarantee you, some of you are gonna be like, I know that smell. I swear to you, that's exactly what it smells like in here. It's kind of concerning because obviously there shouldn't have been hippos or elephants in this car, right? So what 
is making that smell? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's making the smell. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and shut this car off. I was thinking about taking it for a drive because even though it's not the Impala that I want, I think the Impala is actually wider across, probably a little bit longer too. Um, it's, it's really close to what I'm looking for, but it's not what I'm looking for. And with that front end damage, uh, I'm not looking for something that I really have to do a whole lot to uh, before I take it out and start using it. I really like something that's kind of just ready to go out of the gate. And that bumper, that, that bumper needs to be replaced for sure. Um, yeah, there's something going on there. But here we got another one, and this one's definitely worse. <laughs> this one really needs the bumper replaced. Let's see if we can pop the hood. Oh, airbags deployed on this one as well. Urgh. Well, that hood doesn't want to open. What year is this? A 23. Man, it's a brand new car. Oh, I bet there, there's frame damage. Bet you there's frame damage. You hear the way that door popped when I opened it? This fender is pushed way in. I don't know. Could just be superficial damage under here that's pushed the fender back. Maybe the fender apron, something. I don't know. I'm not, like I said, I'm not really a fan of the rental cars, man because there's just nothing that I find all that interesting out here. But if I could find an Impala, man, I would jump on an Impala. Right now, today, as it stands, I would take an Impala LTZ all day over that S-Class Mercedes. Like right now, in this moment, if there's one out here, I'd buy it. So, like I said, now we're no longer in the, uh, the rental car section. Now we're getting into some, you know, some of these cars are a little rough. That truck's a little rough and Here's a little Cadillac SRX. I like these. I like these a lot. I've had a couple of them. Good cars. I'm just not, I'm not seeing anything out here that's catching my eye. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and walk on over. It's a, it's a long walk, guys. This is a big lot. This is not something you walk through in a hurry. So uh, I'm not going to take you guys with me on this long walk. Um, we're going to go over to the repo side where the key cars are. And no, we're not. We're going to look at this first. We're, but then we're going to go over to the repo side where the key cars are and see if maybe that Impala is still there. Because if it is, I'm really thinking I could get somebody to do some body work on that roof. Um, I might be interested in that one if it's still here. This is a 2018 Jaguar XE 4x2 V6. I'm assuming it's a supercharged V6. A Jaguar nonetheless. I kind of like it, but I wish it was two doors. I'm picky. I am. I'm, I'm picky. Oh, oh! Look at this interior. Look at this interior. Such an ugly color on the outside. I'm sorry to those of you that really love silver. To me, silver is just a boring, bland color. But this blue with the suede or Alcantara inserts. Oh man, that makes the car for me. It takes it from boring to like awesome. Okay, I'll bite, I'll bite. I, ooh. It says it's the year 2016. No kidding, 2016, man, that's great. I'm, uh, I'm much younger than I am today. It fired right up, 108,000 miles on the odometer. Oh, that's a good song too. That's a good song, but I'm gonna get myself uh, demonetized if that keeps playing, so let's go ahead and turn it off. Service required air conditioning is on, which is good because it's about a thousand degrees in here. I don't know how to move this steering wheel, but it's in a, uh-oh, steering wheel doesn't move. It goes backwards, but it does not go up or down. Yeah, that's a problem because as you can see, like my knee is, in the steering wheel. It's it's in a really it's in a really bad location. It says it's got a flat front tire. Well, it's got a spare on the front, that's why. Yeah, she she's got some problems. I mean, it's a Jaguar with 100,000 miles. Of course it's got some problems. That's probably why it's here. I'll just put it in gear real quick, see what it does. Backs up. Yep, it's got brakes. Goes forward. Oh, that was I didn't like the way it jerked forward like that. Let's try that again. The transmission is very slow to engage drive. That's fine. It's fine. It, yeah, there, it, it's, there's a... I don't know what's going on there, but I don't like it. What, do we got sport mode? 
how do you work that? There we go, sport track mode. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's turn that auto start stop feature off. I wish that steering wheel would go up. Can we help it? Can we use our knees here to kind of push it while we're, no. It goes forward and backward, but it does not go up. Important window. Yeah, less important window. Very nice. And the only thing that kills this car for me is the silver, which I can get over that. I can't, I can get over the silver. No big deal. It's only got 3% fuel remaining, so we're not gonna drive it. And that steering wheel, man. Um, the silver, I could get over, but the two door, I mean, I, the four doors, I, uh, if I'm gonna get something like this, I really want a two door, really want a two door version. Let's pop the hood. I assume they've hidden it somewhere where nobody can ever find it. I'm sure the XE is probably like the four door model and then the XF is the two door model. I don't know because these aren't, these aren't my type of cars, guys. Really? It's got a hood release and I'm pulling it. It won't open. The latch on the left side is stuck. Lovely. Okay, well, that just sealed your fate. You're not coming home with me. Look at this, guys. They got a place you can stand and cool off. I love this auction. Oh, man, yes. It's nice and shaded. They got the misting water blowing on you. That feels real nice. This is a great company, guys. Really. I feel 100 times better already. Let's see what they got hiding in here. Well, guys, there's too many goodies in this place for me to show you in this video. <laughs> there's far too many. Corvette. Corvette. Model 3. And then over here, we got a Model X. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Yeah, you know I'm gonna have to come over here and check these out, guys. And that's not all. Looks like they may have a, uh, a Hellcat or a Scat Pack up there. Looks like a G-Wagon sitting over there. We got an SL500 right here. God, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah, too many cars in here to show you guys right now. So we'll come back in a in a, a different video, probably, probably on Monday. And we'll check out all the goodies they've got hiding in here. Now let's get over to the repo side of things and Let's see how it's going. So I've been on vacation for a couple weeks, so I have no idea what new inventory is here. I'm certain that my Impala is gone. I really should have jumped on that when I had the opportunity. Um, that's a shame, but let's count. This is from, this is all from the key. This is their side where they do their repos. We got one, two, and three, four. I want to check this Malibu out. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's still here. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Is that all? Twenty-one? Yep. That's 21, so obviously the repos are still going strong, guys. And I think the majority of these are new. The majority of these are not the same cars that were out here before. There may be a couple, but I'm telling you, repos are going absolutely crazy right now. I know this one was here. I remember this one very clearly. I remember that one because I really like that little 370Z. Um, a lot of these other ones, though, I don't recognize them. It's a shame that that Impala is gone. Here's where getting into repos is interesting. All right, um, repossessions can be a good thing. They really can. Um, they're good because most of the time, the companies that own these, the finance companies that own these cars, they're just trying to sell them for whatever they can get out of them. You know, I mean, obviously they want to get as much of their money back as possible, but they don't. They're not going to sit around and leave these cars sitting for months and months, hoping that somebody's going to give what they're asking. They may run them two, three, four times, but eventually they're just going to say, you know what, cut them loose, because whatever the balance is left on the car, left on the note after they sell it. They're just gonna sue the person that signed the contract for it. And they're gonna move on, which means you can a lot of times get good cars at really discounted prices because you're buying a repossession. The downside is a lot of these repossessions have not been taken very good care of. This is a 2020 Malibu. It's got 58,000 miles on the odometer. 
It's no secret I love the Malibu. Unfortunately, I'm not really looking for a Malibu. I'm looking for an Impala. This Malibu, however, has a lot of hail damage. The temp tag on this is from January 20th of 2023. And you see this all the time in Oklahoma. All the time in Oklahoma. How people get away with it, I don't know. I don't know. But somebody was driving this thing around since January with temp tags. Now, you probably think, in most states, the tag expires on the date that's on the tag. Well, not in Oklahoma. Oklahoma does things differently. If the date on the tag is January 20th of 2023, that means that it expires February 20th of 2023. All right, so the tag actually went out February 20th. Well, guys, we're, we're in like August. I mean, <laughs> that's, a, that's a long time to be rolling around on 10 tags. And it also makes you wonder, if you didn't ever go and get your tags done, did you even have insurance on the car in case you were to hit somebody or injure somebody? You know, I, I don't know. I can't answer that. It's just one of those one of those things that I wonder about. It fires right up. We'll see if we got any warning lights on the dash. I wouldn't expect there to be. I mean, even if it was abused, it's still super low miles, man. And it's a relatively new car. Whew, boy, it is hot as hell out here no gas no gas i mean it's left under empty so test driving it is not something i would recommend i love these cars i really do but like i said i'm looking for something specific and uh i may be willing to uh i may be willing to negotiate a little you know if i find an lt that's well loaded maybe i'd go with an impala lt i just don't think i'm gonna be happy with a Malibu. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna be satisfied with a Malibu. And I'm not looking to keep something long term. Um, the way I want to do this is I want to run it for, I don't know, maybe just a few months, rack some miles up. Maybe it'd be something that uh, we used to go back and forth to Indiana because the miles on my Ram 3500 are, they're getting bad guys. I've got like 81, 82,000 miles on that truck now. Well, the warranty runs out at 100. So I'm really trying, but I still, I still have like three years of warranty left, but I'm down to like, you know, 17,000 miles of warranty remaining. So I need to back off the miles. Plus the cost of diesel fuel, especially up North in Indiana, it's over $4 a gallon. Most of the time it's, it's getting expensive. I want a big car that's roomy, that gets good fuel economy, that still looks decent. I want to be able to run it for a few months and then sell it. I'll buy it through the dealership. I don't have to tag it. I don't have to insure it because my dealership covers the insurance. I can buy it, put the tags on it. I can use it. And then when I'm done with it, I can resell it, you know, right back through the auction. The mileage doesn't matter. The mileage won't matter. If I put six, 10,000 miles on it, it's not going to hurt anything. I can just resell it when I'm done with it and then go buy another one and do it again. And then technically it's like, I'm getting to use cars for free. Let's just run through real quick. I gotta, <coughs> damn it. I'm gonna walk through some of these cars real quick. I'm just kind of curious as to, you know, which ones are damaged, how heavily. This whole side of this car has been painted and not well, that's painted bad. The orange peel is insane. Look, it's even cracking on the bumper. They used filler on the bumper. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's I, that probably doesn't come out on camera. It's bad. It's bad. You got a Kia Optima up here. I already know the front end is like ripped off of this one. You got a Veloster over here that I don't know what's going on with that one, but oh yeah, yeah. It's very common on these repo cars to see they've got they've got damage. You know, here's a Jeep, and it, it looks relatively good. But you get under here and see it's got a little got a little damage going on there. Nothing too crazy though. Um, honestly, most of these don't look all that bad. This one, I guess, was left with the sunroof open, so they tried to tape that up. 120,000 miles. Doesn't look too bad. Looks like we got a pair of Buicks here, these Regals. I like the Regal. I do. This actually doesn't look bad at all. A little small, though. Definitely a little small for what I'm looking for. That's what, a Lacrosse, a Lucerne? I think it's a Lucerne. Oh, somebody. Oh, man. That sucks. Right the side of the tire, man. It's a lacrosse. It is a lacrosse. I was right the first time. I do kind of like this Regal, though. It, it's small and it's four doors, but I don't know. There's something about it. it it's a kind of a cool looking car. I kind of like it. I do. I kind of like it. I just wish it was, uh, I wish it was two doors instead of four. It doesn't smell good, but whatever, man. 
<laughs> whatever. I'm surprised more of these cars aren't torn up. Like these cars actually don't look that bad. They don't look that bad. Oop, I lied. Hold on. Here's one. This, <laughs> wow. So uh, yeah, the bumper's gone on that one. And it looks like that is not a hailstone, guys, because this thing doesn't have deep enough hail dings in it for that to be a hailstone. To <laughs> make that kind, look at the impact, right? That is something heavy, like somebody was swinging maybe a baseball bat or maybe somebody threw a baseball at it. I don't know, but that was not a hailstone. It's all scratched up down the side. Sad, man. Really sad. Pretty high miles too. 175,000 miles. Lots of hail damage. Oh, there's the bumper. The bumper is in the back seat. Ooh, ooh, the smell of that one. Oh my. Oh, wow. Mm, mm, mm. There's got to be rotten food in there. It's probably 140 degrees or more inside of these cars. <laughs> Rotting food, not good. Not good. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call that a wrap. We're going to get out of here. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.